but with no delay system. Father God, use this little princess, Father. Use her, Father, my dear. She is yours, my Father. Let us speak in the boldness of your spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, we rejoice that we delight ourselves, Father, in her as she rejoices and delights herself in you. She is, Father, truly, Lord, a way in our past, Father, that you have brought, that we may see, Father. And not only, Father, but she brings so much joy and laughter, Father. It's like medicine to our bones, my Lord. Medicine to our bones. So, Father, this is your daughter. Use her mightily, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. This is yours. Take over. Be blessed. Hello. I am not alone. That's the whole teaching there. Can we go home now? I want to thank you, Nora, for this opportunity. I think this is uh, God's time. It's God's time. So today I'm going to share what the Lord has been teaching me and molding me and in the past few years. So the scripture that the Lord has given me to share with you is in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and, um, and also in Psalm 27, 14, and that will be for later. So um, in my culture, when we read the Word of God, this is a cultural thing, when we read the Word of God, we stand up. So I ask you to stand up in reverence to the Word of the Lord. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Let's uh, read it on the NIV, please. We can read it together. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. One more translation. In an easy-to-read version, it says, My brothers and sisters, you will have many kinds of trouble, but this gives you a reason to be very happy. You know that your faith is tested. You learn to be patient in suffering. If you let that patience work in you, the end result will be good. You will be mature and complete. You will be all that God wants you to be. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. You can now be seated. All of us are no strangers to trials and afflictions. Amen. Especially when COVID hit in 2020. Life was never the same. And I wanted to give a definition of what trials and affliction is. See, Mama, I'm learning from you. So the Greek um, term for trials is perasmos. It says it's an experiment. It's a trial.
trial in a positive sense which brings blessing and a temptation in a negative sense. And it's also called a trial, a probation, a testing, being tried, temptation, calamity, affliction. Now let's see what affliction is. Oni is a Hebrew for affliction, which, mean, which means misery or poverty. And in its use passively, it is the state of being in pain or in trouble. So I would suppose that trials and afflictions are somewhat similar in nature. Amen? So, um, there are five things that stood out. Okay. So in reading James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, there are five things that God uh, allowed me to see and it stood out for me. Number one, trials will come. Do you believe that trials will come? And God allows them to happen. If you notice, the Bible did not say Consider it pure joy if trials will come. What did it say? Consider it pure joy when trials will come. It is not, it is not, um, what do you call it? It's inevitable. It will come because that's what the word says. And Lord has been teaching that in the last days, hard times will come. Trials will come whether we like it or not. It did come to me yesterday. My baby, my baby cat died. And it's hard, trials are hard. But, you know, yesterday morning, when she, she breathed her last in my arms, I find I found myself just declaring the goodness of the Lord. I say, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will cease to say, the Lord blesses be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. You give and take away. My heart will cease to say, Lord blessed be your name. Amen. Number two, our faith will be tested to determine if it is genuine. Amen? You will never know that you will mature in your faith until you get through a trial. The trials will reveal what kind of foundation we have. Did you build a house on the rock or on the sand? So trials are essential for growing in our faith. And that's what the Lord has really, really been to see me. He's testing my faith to see if I will press on, if I will go on. Number three, counting or considering trials as joy is the command. It is not what it's not like ah. Eh, I don't want, it's hard to count it as joy. Death is not fun. Losing a loved one is not fun. Watching a loved one go through so hard, many hardships is not fun. Watching my husband suffer, suffer is not fun. But this is a command that we need to obey. It is a Greek imperative verb. That requires obedience. It means that we have to esteem it to regard highly and prize accordingly. Do you know why we have to esteem it and count it as joy? Number four, this is the answer. Trial produces patience or perseverance. The joy comes out of what the trial produces in our lives. That's where the joy comes. It may be hard. It would make it. It doesn't make any sense when you're in the middle of it. 
few years ago, I, it, it's hard to get a grasp of what the Lord is doing. It's hard to make sense of it all. But now, I see the joy because of what it produced in me. The shallow produces spiritual maturity. It's not the kind of like shallow kind of happiness that you know it depends on the situation. Ah, today is anywhere tomorrow. No, it is a kind of joy that only that is only produced by the Holy Spirit. It is a kind of joy that no one, no one and nothing can take away from you. That is the joy that it produces. It is a kind of joy that is enduring, a lasting joy, knowing that even in our trials and afflictions, God is still on the throne. Amen. He is still in control. Number five, for patience, to have its full effect or for patience to finish its work, we have a part to do. And what is it? We have to allow patience to finish its work. It says, it is another Greek imperative verb, which means it is also command, like the, the one in consider. When, when the word says consider or count it all joy, it is the same command, allow or let, let patience, let perseverance, perseverance finish its work. If there is no patience endurance, we will not grow in the faith. Most of the time we wanted to get out of it right away. I don't like this, Lord. It's very uncomfortable. I don't like it. It's so painful. I don't like it at all. But... Without patient endurance, it will not finish its work. We won't be mature. We won't be complete. We won't be uh, lacking in nothing. Sufficiency, I think that's the word has. So, is there, oh, okay, most of the time, okay. And sometimes when we're in the trial, we just pray for deliverance right now. All I miss, my oh Lord, I like, I want, I want deliverance now, you know. But God is telling us that it is a process. It is a process. Patient endurance is required so that we become mature and we will lack nothing because our sufficiency comes from Him. Amen. So I'm gonna go to. I've, I've given the five things that God showed me in these verses, but I wanted to say something that it is one thing to be delivered from affliction, and it is also another thing to be delivered through affliction. So I want to tell you that there were one. Two and three that God has pointed out to me. God delivered me from indifference. In this situation that I was in, He delivered me from indifference. In a sense that He allowed me to really hear His voice. So when the Lord said the same, listen and listen. And here, that was the same thing that the Lord was teaching me. In Job 36, 15, it says, He delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ears by adversity. Affliction has taught me to listen to His voice. Before, there were so many competing voices trying to get into my life. And through my afflictions and trials, I have learned to listen, to recognize, and to speak His voice. I have realized that God's Word becomes clearer. It becomes clearer 
when your ears are in tune with His voice. Amen. God's word becomes alive. It comes alive. It comes out of you. It comes alive because your heart is ready. Your heart is ready. That's one thing that God did to me. In Psalms 119.71, I don't think I have a slide. It says, it is good for me. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Affliction is good for us. Affliction becomes a blessing when we, when uh, affliction becomes a blessing because of what it produces in us. Keep your ears open to the Lord. Remember what uh, the little boy Samuel who said when God was calling him, he said, what did he say? Speak, my Lord, for thy servant he was to that. That's what happens when we hear His voice. God delivers us from hearing other voices. When we are in our difficult times, He opens our ears. He opens our ears. Number two, God delivered me from the sin of pride and self-sufficiency. That was hard. You think you're super weak? I got this. Yep. I got this. <laughs> but God delivered me from that. And I thank Him for that. In Second Corinthians 1, 8 and 9, it says, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. This is Paul. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God who raises the dead. Amen. In the English Standard Version, it says, For we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. In that powerful declaration by Paul, he causes affliction for us to see that we can only rely on him and not on ourselves. On December, uh, December 5, 2021, Pastor Charlie gave me a word of prophecy. And this was based on 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. He said there, You have felt the sentence of death. I was testing you so you could see what was in your heart. It was a test. So you could see where your heart really lies. I'm stripping things away from you that you were trusting in. The sentence of death came. That was, that was the very word that he told me. The sentence of death came so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in the living God who raised us to death. Those are the very words. He told me, December 5, 2021, on a Sunday morning service. This time, in my season, this is a stripping away so that all of my confidence and all of my trust will be in the Lord alone. That's why affliction becomes a blessing because of what God is doing. What, because of what God is doing in your own being. 
it is your soul. You want your soul. This is what we want so that you and I will find him to be our all in all. That's why. That's why I thank God. Thank God for your affliction. Number three, God delivered me from loving the world and its desire. You know, nothing, nothing in this world satisfies. Nothing. That's why he said he is the living water. The living water, the living, the giver of the living water. Whoever drinks from this water will never thirst. He's the bread of life. He's the only one that satisfies. Nothing else. I am loved by an omnipotent God. My identity is in Christ. He is enough. Three words. God is enough. There is nothing. Sometimes we try to drown our our um, trials in, in other things. You know, I gotta travel, I gotta go to that. I, I, I'm not saying that that's good. I wanted to relax. I wanted to go to the ocean. I wanted to go on vacation. But this is just not the right time for me. But God is teaching me. I don't have to go to the beach to be peaceful, to get peace. I am your peace. I don't have to go somewhere to get rest. You are my rest, Lord. You are the rest. I don't have to go anywhere to get comfort. He is my comfort. Amen. Amen. And I will not trade it for anything because of what God is doing in me. I will not trade it for anything. And also I realize that His mercy is greater than healing. His mercy is greater than healing and deliverance from affliction. I want you to um, a slide, please. Someone wrote this. While being delivered from affliction is great mercy, being delivered by affliction is the greater one. It makes us more aware of God's voice. It increases our reliance on Him and prepares us for the citizens of heaven and a weight of glory beyond comparison. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you still with me? <laughs> okay. These are my notes. Without affliction, I would never have realized how distant or how far my heart was from him. And this is always my my motto. Motto? Motto? Okay. I thank him for saving me from my son. I never stop praying for God. I always have, always will. I never stop day and night. I am confident that the Lord will do it in His time, and I am already thanking Him for what He's going to do. He will come through me. He will come through for you. He will do the same for you in a way that only He can. Because, you know, we are different flowers, according to the North. God deals with us in a different way, you know. Not like a, you can put him in a box. Not like a generic kind of dealing. Because he made us different. So, I know it has been three and a half years. Yeah, is it three and a half years now? Yeah, it has been, it's, been, it's going four years now. But I believe. I will not stop believing. As he is working the virtue of patience in me, I will never stop believing. Never stop believing. Believe his word. He will come come through because his word is true. He is faithful. So we go now to waiting patiently. Mm. 
Okay, so what does wait patiently mean? Here we go. It says to wait, to look for, to hope, to expect. To wait, look eagerly for, to lie in wait for, to linger. So, patience in affliction. Patience involves waiting. True or false? Americans don't like to wait. You want everything in an instant when I move here? The pencil uh, sharpener. You don't you just this paper. These people are I'm angry now. I'm sorry. I'm American now, so <laughs> So I remember when we were growing up, I remember growing up, there was there was a point in our lives where we don't have power. You know, you have we have to use lamps to study, make our homework and all that and use firewood. We have to wait, we're so hungry. It's 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 a lot of waiting. But here we have microwave, air fryer. Ooh, everything. Yeah. Borda. And the Chinese invented instant noodles. <laughs> you know, we have smartphones. We have everything in our fingertips. You know, this Alexa, when you pay my bill. You know. <laughs> so. People don't want to wait even in the stoplight. Well, I'm a new driver. I'm a new driver. Student driver. <laughs> I'm a student driver and I have to order a sticker from Amazon that says, Please be patient, student driver. Yeah, because it's, it's scary. They're like, eh, eh. they want me to fly as soon as the green light is on. Like, hey, I want to live. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you pray, Lord, please give me patience right now. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> but God says, we have to wait on Him. Wait patiently. Psalm 27, 14, it says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. In the Amplified, it says, Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. So how do we wait for the Lord? What should be our attitude? What should be our posture when we wait for the Lord? Number one, we have to wait in prayer. This is one of the, the earliest things that the Lord has um, work, work in me. Because when you face uh, in a day-to-day, day in and day out, anxiety and depression and hopelessness, day in and day out, it's hard to wait. Like, when will this end? It, like, where is the light at the end of the tunnel? I can't see it. But God says, wait patiently. Wait patiently. Call upon the Lord and tell Him everything. Your pain, your struggles, your difficulties. Someone said this in a quote, pray hardest when it's hardest to pray. That is the challenge when you have to drag yourself to really pray. 
Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He replied to me and heard my cry. Is it always going to be sunshine and happy and light? No. Sometimes, like the Lord said, if you cut me, I bleed. I still bleed. You get discouraged sometimes. And sometimes when discouragement comes, it, it just makes you weak, you know? And some days you feel like giving up. Sometimes in the prayers, in our prayers, there are just no words. There are just no words because of pain. Just pain that, that's just hard to bear. I pray in my language, in my first language, because I feel that that's the best way that the Father can hear me. But sometimes there are just no words. He just prays through your tears. He just prays in silence. In silence. Some of my greatest prayers are in silence. It's complete silence. Some of my greatest prayers are in words never come out because the pain is too strong. But our heart can speak because God hears it. He is the one who made our heart. He was the one who created our heart. And whatever it says, God hears it. Amen. Psalm 34, 8, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And save the crushed in spirit. So if you are broken, you are not. Because he's here. He's here. He sees every tear. He knows your name. You remember that song? He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tearless fault and hears me when I call. That's an assurance of the Lord. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So we wait in prayer. We wait in prayer for the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, Romans 12, 12. Patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Amen. I encourage you, do not give up. I encourage myself every morning, do not give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. Do not give up. Get up. Get out. Get some fun. Stress. Exercise. Eat, eat a lot. Eat a lot of rice. <laughs> <laughs> eat comfort food. <laughs> no, <laughs> you gotta keep on living. You can't be. You can't just be hiding. You can't be hiding in a corner. Just get up, live, live for the Lord. Amen. When you feel anxious, pray. When fear comes, pray. Pray. Listen to his voice. Spend time in his presence. The Bible says, draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. I remember the song I first learned when I was in um, college. I don't know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a long time since I was in college. <laughs> but this song really um, touched my heart. About being near, near to the Lord, is that we will draw, draw near to you, knowing that as we do, you will draw near to us. Remember that song, Mom? We will draw near to you, knowing that as we do, you will draw near, you will draw near. 
God is to us. Listen to this. When you want to be like men who found a better part, when you want to be like John who laid his head upon your heart, we are not content to worship from afar. Draws near to your heart, oh God. Do you want to be like John, who laid his head up on the heart of Jesus? In the middle of the night, I would always picture myself being cradled. I remember what you prayed earlier. Cradle her into your arms. That's always the picture in my heart. I miss my family. I want to see my family. But it's just not possible. <laughs> but I just picture myself being held by my father. And I would just lay my head on his heart like he was cradling me like a baby. And I find comfort in that. We will find comfort when we know that we are being held by God, who is omnipotent, who is the God who reigns, the God who rules, the God who is majestic, the God who created the heavens and the earth is the one holding me close to his heart. That is a big comfort. Number two, I have... Uh, Twenty more pages. I'm kidding. Number two. Number one was wait in prayer. Number two, wait in humility. It was humble yourself with an attitude of repentance and insignificance in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will give you purpose. Wait in humility. When trials come. People, well, a lot of people become rebellious too. They turn away from God. A lot of people turn away because it's, it's just too hard. Too hard, too hard. But God calls us to draw near to Him. Even in the hardest times. There are times when we are in our affliction that you feel like you're being really crushed. You really, really cross. You are reduced to nothing sometimes. Isaiah 42 3 says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. I read a, a commentary that I want to share with you about this, this particular verse. It's a, it's a commentary by Dr. Dave Les Khalid. He says here in verse 3 of this passage, Isaiah writes about a bruised reed. The English word bruised does not fully convey what Isaiah is trying to teach us. The word bruised is a weak word because we experience bruises all the time. The word we translate, uh, no. But, the, but in the Hebrew language, the word we translate in English as bruised is a word that means crushed. It's not just a bruise. You are crushed. It says there, it means, it implies a deep contention. This is not merely a break in the skin externally, but rather a break internally that has injured or destroyed a vital internal organ. Isaiah is talking about maybe something you don't see on the surface. It's on the inside. But on the inside, you are so crushed that you are literally dying. Affliction does that to us. Sometimes you feel so crushed 
And we think we can't get out of it. For Isaiah, it is the, the reed that is crushed. This reed is a stalk of grain that is broken or crushed. That is broken at such an angle that it will never produce again. That's what it means. But at the same time, the servant that Isaiah is writing about, this is Jesus, is able to do something that no one can do. He can heal the cross weed so he can produce grain once again. Only God can do that. Even if you feel crushed like that grain, he will not break us. And if, even if you feel like there is like a flip, flickering light is left. Because of the trial, because of the affliction, the difficulties that we go through, he will not snuff it out. That's a comfort, huh? What a comfort. Even if you feel like it can't be used again, it can't produce again, God is not going to break you. I thank the Lord. Now I'm going to share a, a little personal story. Um, I thank the Lord for the blessing of the brain mapping. I don't know if you've heard about the near feedback sessions that uh, a neuroscientist came to our church and, and introduced it. I, I am so grateful to, to the Lord for using Pastor Charlie and Sister Irma for the, this brain map. It, it, it's kind of trying to assess the condition of your brain, where it's at physiologically. So, physiologically, my brain was not doing very well. You can see the colors there in the picture. Yeah. So my first brain map was the top one. You see all the colors there. And it's, it's the fight or flight situation, the one with the colors. Physiologically, my brain was not doing very well. I was already spent physically, emotionally, and psychologically. The neuroscientist who analyzed my brain map report last June of this year said that in five to six years, my brain would have a hard time functioning, and I will not be able to care for myself or anyone else because of caregiver stress. So there's a lot of stress in, in the system. And just knowing the condition of my brain is more than enough for me to make the necessary adjustments. So it was a blessing to see how it is, to know where it is now, and to make the necessary steps to help it go back to where it needs to be. Not when I was 10, but at least <laughs> It's function enough not to get, um, I don't know, I'm not a neuroscientist, but to make it stable enough to handle stress. I, I, I think I just, I just leave it like that. So we had neurofeedback sessions. The neurofeedback sessions, like you watch videos and all that, to train your brain to control the anxiety, the fear, the aggression and the anger and all the everything that's involved in caregiving. So I um I am very thankful for that. The first map was the top one, the second one was the middle one, and the third one was the final one. And the colors are gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank the Lord, I don't have any brain left. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's clear now, I have nothing in there, no more. <laughs> but personally, I'm really thankful to the Lord for that. It's a blessing 
because it's, it's actually, when we first heard about it, it's actually, it really touched my heart, knowing that I am seen, I am, I am seen by the Lord. He became my, my Elroy, the God who sees me. He saw me. That was, that was a, a comfort. That God sees me. <laughs> I know that mom is here, but most of the time people will ask, how's Brad? All the time, how's your husband? How's Brad? How's Brad? How's your husband? But sometimes I wanted to hear, how are you? How are you? And this, this is the way that God showed me, that really spoke to my heart, that He cares for me. He sees me. He knows what's going on in my brain. Basically, He knows He sees me. He's my own Lord. As we wait in humility, we give this more grace. Second Corinthians 12, 9. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest in me. James 4 says, Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and he will lift you up. He will give you purpose. And this is from the Amplified Bible. So I can say that even in the midst of your affliction, you and me can still be used in God's kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, the cross breeds can produce the gift. Even if you feel cross sometimes, God can still use you. Do not listen to the enemy. He says, oh, just stay here at home. You know, watch it online or whatever. But just you being here becomes an encouragement to someone else. And seeing your face becomes an encouragement to someone else. You know, just you being here, just seeing you hugging, smiling like Tia, hearing her joke, and <laughs> gives you joy, you know? Compared to when you're staying at home and by yourself and talking and being sorry for yourself. You know what I mean? I was telling you, North, my Thursday night is like a deep well. It's like a deep well that I draw from. I know Jesus is the source of living water, but coming to the women's ministry, it's like a deep well. You draw strength from each other. There, there, there is joy in being hugged and being held and being said, Hi, how are you? You look fat today, you know. <laughs> well, you know, in America, the, the Americans would say, Hi, how no are you? So good to see you. In the Philippine culture, when you see each other, it's like, Oh, you gained some weight! <laughs> what happened? Is you that know, true? That's just how we greet each other. <laughs> and reality. You know, you look different today. Do you eat too much? <laughs> yeah, but being here, just being here is a joy. It's a well that you constantly, constantly draw, draw from, you know? And yet, we have to forgive us Filipinos when we get together. Because most of us are married to Americans. And at home, when we open our eyes, we have to speak in English. And when we gather together, then that's the time we can speak our language. That sometimes we're like click, or we're like a click. But it is just, it does that, uh, then we have something in common. So we can express ourselves to one another without processing it in our brain. What is, if I have to speak in English, I have to process it in my brain. And then, 
you know what I mean. But yeah, number three, let's go to number three or else we'll be here. Wait in faith. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in His word I put my hope. Romans 8, 24, for in this hope we were saved. The hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Right? Doubting while waiting is an insult to the Lord. Lenore would always say, where there is doubt, there is lack of faith. Amen. Yeah. And number four, we have to wait with a thankful heart. Psalm 119 says, This is my comfort and my affliction, for your word has given me life. And Psalm 30, verse 5, 5b, says, Weeping may last through the night. My joy comes in the morning. Amen. Right? Hmm. There is so much blessing when we are thankful to the Lord. He also strengthens us, strengthens us as we thankfully wait for Him. His word says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings to see those. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not be faint. So in closing, I want to share this slide. Uh, the uh, William Barclay uh, quote regarding patience. It's kind of long, but it kind of sums up the whole thing that I was talking about here. It says, the word patience never means the spirit, the spirit which sits with folded hands and simply bare things. It is victorious endurance, that is the key word, victorious endurance, and constancy under trial. It is Christian steadfastness, the brave and courageous acceptance of everything life can do to us, and the transmuting or, or the changing of its nature of even the worst into another step of the upward wing. It is the courageous and triumphant ability to bear faith which enables a man to pass breaking points and not to break. And always to greet the unseen with a fear. Isn't that amazing? With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. When the enemy says, why don't you throw in the towel? I'm very tempted. <laughs> Others can say, you did not sign up for this. Why are you trying to endure it? You did not sign up for it. But I'm trying to encourage myself to not listen, to not listen to that. Listen to the Lord. Because when we stay in His Word, what, the, what will happen when we stay in this word? We will be strengthened, and there is the reward for those who wait patiently in their affliction. Do you want to finish strong? I want to finish strong. I want to finish the race. I want you and I to finish strong together. Amen. James wants us as blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Are you ready for the crown? I'm trying to encourage you, encourage myself. When God works, it's always worth the wait. Amen.